Hello, everybody. This is KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. Make sure to subscribe. You got to click the subscribe button so you can get notifications when I make videos like this and follow along and find something better to watch than what's on TV this day and age. So here is the N3FJP software. And I want to show you this because people have seen videos from this weekend for field day and they have no idea what's going on. Why am I using this software? They may have seen it at field day and they say, you know, I see these guys running this. And what are these people saying on field day when they say, you know, KJ4YZI, One Echo, Sierra Fox, Trot Lima, what's that mean? I'm going to show you what we're doing. Now to reiterate, field day is not a contest. Field day is designed or implemented to get amateur radios, radio operators out, uh, you know, into an area that they don't normally operate in the field, field day, and utilize and hone your skills and utilize antennas and, and portable power solutions and get amateur radio on the air for a 24 hour period without doing your standard thing. You know, there's people out there with lexicons and rack mount stuff for sideband. Some of it's ridiculous. Get out in the field with a, with a portable radio, uh, a generator, battery, solar, whatever, and operate on whatever you can to make as many contacts as you can in that period. Now, there is an incentive to give you, uh, they give you an incentive to make as many contacts as you can with phone, CW, and digital modes. Now, the most popular software that I have used the last couple of years during field day is the NJ. Uh, N3 FJP software. Now, there is two free downloads for this: the, con the just regular ham radio contest log software and field day software. Now, I'm going to tell you how this works. Okay, normally, see, normally I'm at field day uh, with the guys out at the you know this year again they were at the fairgrounds. They had the pavilion, and you have one guy who's an IT guy. He sets up the, the router, the main computer, and then everybody is linked on their own computer to this computer. And what happens is when everybody's running the software, you can see who's making contacts with their initials and their operator, what band they're on, what mode they're on. Field day has rules. Like, for instance, W4OT um, this year, Vero Beach Amateur Radio Club, was using 3-Alpha South Florida. 3-Alpha means three operators at one time. Alpha is a club, uh, a club, and they're on emergency power. Sierra, Fox, Trout, Lima. There's three different regions in Florida: North Florida, South Florida, and West Central Florida. So if you look on the bottom here, you'll see KJ4YZI, One Echo, Sierra, Fox, Trout, Lima. Now, One Echo means I am one operator or one station at home on emergency power. I did field day with a uh, couple 12 volt sealed lead acid batteries and my solar panel outside. Pure you know, sun power, nothing plugged into the wall at all. Maybe my computer, that's allowed, okay? Now, you may hear a one Delta, or you may hear a three Charlie. Or you look at the ARRL rules, and it'll tell you what each class of station is. So, the idea behind this software is because if you were a three Alpha, like Whiskey for Oscar Tango was in Vero Beach this year, that means three operators at any given time, but you cannot operate three on 20 or three on four, you have to have different modes. So you can have three operators on one on CW, one on phone and one on digital, or you can have three as in one on 20, one on 15, one on 10, but you can't have three on CW or three on FT8 or whatever. So it, how do you know if people are operating on 20 CW? Well, when your software like this is linked up, to the you know main computer they got running there or everybody on the Wi-Fi router, it'll show you. Hey, look, uh, Eric Hofer here, KJ4YZI is on 20 digital. Then you know somebody's on 20 digital. And there's a way to look on here on what operators are currently logged in and what they're on. In my situation, okay, and I'll get to I'll show you around this in a second. I'm just prefacing this with some information. In my situation, I was home. So I don't have to connect with anybody else. All I'm doing is generating this to a log file. OK, normally you can do TCP and everybody's when when someone makes a contact right here, boom, it'll pop up and you'll see, oh, look, Craig's making some contacts here on 20. So I know I'm on 40 and he'll see me. Wow, Eric's knocking him dead on 40. That's like a TCP group networking effort. I didn't do that this year because I'm home. OK, now 
When I type in a call, this first of all, I made 22 phone contacts, 17 digital contacts. I got a total of QSO or 56 QSO points. Now, I don't get too hung up on the score here. It's not a contest, but there are some 10 alpha stations that are I've worked here. Let's find one. Let's find if you're a 10 alpha here. Here you go, right here. KK5W 10 alpha in South Texas. Okay, they're they got 10 operators on at one time, so they can cover like 6, 10, 15, 20, 40, 80, and then another one on digital, another one on two meters, another one on CW, another one on phone. I mean, they could do a lot of contacts at one time. But for my simple sake for field day, I just wanted to use this. Now, as I make contacts, you type it in right here. For instance, we're going to use just a random call here. Um, uh, uh, let's use John's KM4MCK, right? And then his class, whatever he would be, let's say he's one echo at home. And then section would be South Florida, right? Now, if... If this was a new station that I didn't work, you notice over here, the regions, DX, three, five, seven, like I'm in four, so South Florida. I've already worked South Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, Puerto Rico, Tennessee, right? But there was still uh, Kentucky, North Florida, Virgin Islands, Virginia, and West Central Florida. I didn't work those, right? If they're in blue, it means you've worked them. So if it's a new station like San Francisco, it would show up new, right? Because San Francisco is over here in six land. So the idea is it's logging this and it's giving you an idea to know when you have duplicates. Because watch this. I'm going to type in one that's up here. So if I pick W, so let's see, on W2QH 20 digital, right? So let's say I was on 20 digital. Now watch. If I do W2QH, right? Possible duplicate. And I don't know if you heard that in the, in the speaker is duplicate. So you already know you've worked that station and that was number 37 right here. Right? So that gives you an idea. Now, if you worked them on phone, if you went like this, right? And then you put him uh, that station in W two Q H one Delta. Now I haven't worked him on phone yet. So that would be another log entry. Do you get the idea? Now over time, what will happen is, you will get a list like uh, I think the Vero Beach Club had 175 operator or 175 contacts. Uh, they didn't have hardly any digital, they said. And we lost our friend Dwayne and for LNN uh, K4 LNN um, who was on CW and he always used to sit up all night, just make hundreds of contacts on CW. Well, we didn't have CW. They didn't have CW operators and have digital operators. So just a lot of phone, right? So over the list of this, it gets confusing to remember who you've talked to and who you haven't. But then there's other stuff like this, map, right? So if you go to map, now this is the contacts or the states that I worked or the areas, let's call it, you know, areas because I have Puerto Rico. <clears throat> I did work on Canada Station and it, there he is, VA3YVE, right? GTA. Now, I'm not sure why that's not shown. Where is GTA? Let's see. Greater Toronto area, then why wasn't that on the map? Let's see. I don't see a Greater Toronto area on here. Over the course of, you know, hours and hours, you'll see if you have a club going, you'll see states populate and regions and territories up here and Alaska and all this. And you'll be like, wow, look at the colors. You know, we're, we're getting contacts everywhere. It gives you a little bit of a, you know, a feeling of, wow, that was, you know, look at the contacts we're making. So, Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So this software, like I said, so you, you choose your mode. Like you can go down here and go to band. Left click to go down. Right click to go up. Same thing with mode, band. And then um, if you, if if somebody signs into this computer and they're a different person, you click operate or change it. Because sometimes clubs have, you know, uh, this is maybe my computer, but John wants to get on. And it's linked up already. So John can put his credentials in here and it'll show me initials and operators. Show everybody. All right. Yes. Done. Okay. So there's your bands there. You can do satellite. If somebody's on satellite right here, boom, already sets up your satellite and your phone. And then, um, you know, away you go. So that's what you're seeing here. Uh, again, one echo would be one station operating from home on emergency power. Uh, if you were a one alpha, that would mean one station operating at a club, right? Um, and then there's one Delta, which is one operator at home 
using commercial power. You're plugged into the wall, right? So those things are all in the ARRL uh, rules for field day. And this year they did change that everybody has to be a maximum of 100 watts. Now, the reason they did that was because a couple of the last few years, you'd have some guy with a Henry X port and this thing's pushing out 2,500, 3,000 watts on FT8 and phone. And, and don't tell me it doesn't happen because I've met people. I've watched these amplifiers that were five foot tall on, on field day. And I'm not going to tell you what clubs they had those. It wasn't our club, but it does happen. People want, people get stuck on this score right here. People get stuck on, wow, we're going to be named in the AWR. Well, guess what? Nobody knew that you were running illegal power, but you know, it's not fair for the people that are running hundred Watts with a modest antenna. That's why they implemented rules and I'm glad they did. So looking at my content uh, my contacts here, uh, I did switch to digital. So I had, uh, you know, all these phone contacts here, just Puerto Rico, USA, Canada. And then I switched to digital. I did six meter digital. I did five contacts there. It was like shooting fish in a barrel. So I made a video on all those. You can watch those as well. Uh, and then I went to 10 meter digital. I made uh, one, two, three, four, five there. I went to 15 digital. I made a couple. Then I went to 20 digital, five of those contacts. So I did that just to see. And I'm going to show you a video on my channel also if you're watching to see. I'm going to, I'm going to look back on the PSK reporter and see all the receiving stations that are receiving on FT8 on who heard my station. It seems that I didn't have a lot of DX propagating from my qth and vero beach uh you're gonna see that in another video i won't spoil it anyways that's the idea behind the software the link is in the description you can download this for personal use uh for just contesting if there's a contest wpx contest cw contest and then on ft8 you can actually integrate this from ft8 so when you make a contact you hit log qso and it goes right into here so that's the purpose behind this if you see this i've never met the person i don't know who he is and I, I want to thank him for, or M, whoever N3FJP is, I want to thank that N3FJP for designing this or being a part of it. There is a paid version of this, and there's probably more options. I took the cheap way and downloaded it. But if your club is using this, please do the right thing and support people who put time and effort into this, much like I do in my videos. I'm going to stop asking you for support. That's why I'm trying to get sponsors, so I don't have to ever ask you for support again. But all my patrons, I appreciate. In the meantime, people that make stuff like this are not YouTubers, and they do this on their side, and they make it, and they put a lot of time into this. So consider that. If you're using it for your 10 Alpha station in South Texas, hopefully you've passed along to keep this ham radio hobby going. That is the software here. Probably a very lackluster video. Probably something that's boring. It didn't have a lot of colors or a new radio. But I hope you leave a comment below and tell me that you've learned something from this video. And that will make me a lot happier to know that this video went somewhere. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. And 7-3, this is KJ4YZI.